Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with books. Oh my god, I just ruined one of my favorite songs. Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katerina and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you guys. This is a book haul of all of the books that I got in May. So if you're excited, just click you know, you will probably see some horror, some hardcovers, some paperbacks, some mangas, maybe some comics. We are hoping, I don't even know because I will just mix and mash together clips of me just having books. So. Awesome. If you want to come on this ride with me, let's do it. So the first book that I have here to show you, I've actually already watched the movie. And even though it was an interesting filmed movie, I cannot say that it was compelling enough to me. I enjoyed it, but I was expecting more. But I haven't read the book and I'm hoping that the book is better. This book was actually a surprise because... I wasn't expecting it. I didn't order it and my friend Miguel, which you've probably heard about if you're on this channel for a while, I will leave his bookstagram down, you know, on the place where the links are. Um, but he was like, I have two copies of this book, do you want one? And and I, I, I am a terrible person and I was like, fuck yeah give me books. So that is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Um, this cover, I mean, we all agree it's not the best cover because it's the book, the book to movie tie-in, um, but I mean, we read what we can get and it, it's actually, I like the pattern of the flowers. So I am extremely excited to actually read and see what this is about in book format. I think I'm going to like it more than I enjoyed the film. Then the second book that I have here is the ending of the first Dead Sea Press uh, trilogy. Um, and it is Death in the Deep. This is all edited by Jay Alexander and the cover is also done by him. Um, and this one I have a short story in the first one, Terror in the Trench. So, of course, I have that one. It's up there. And then I have the second one, Shadows Beneath the Surface, because I saw more author names that I was intrigued about and I wanted to keep on um, picking these up. If you want to read aquatic horror, of course, there are some trigger warnings in all of these anthologies, but they are uh, described at the end of the books. And so I really think that you should pick this up if you have a hint of maybe liking horror or not. You should figure it out through here because each purchase that you do for this one um, goes, I believe, to the Shark Trust. Yes, here it goes. And the Shark Trust is an organization that preserves sharks and other creatures from marine biology and habitats of those creatures, yada yada, prevents them from being um, hurt and uh, hunt to extinction. So all the profits go there. The authors don't get the profits uh, because they are in this for the charity and the, the writing, let's just say. So I am very intrigued about this one. This one is supposed to be horror in the blue deep ocean but not like in the trenches or in the um, in the very deep dark places it's a little bit more uh, on top of it and i'm really happy i i've heard there are going to be shark tales i hope um and i love shark horror i absolutely love it i hate that the shark has to die in the end of the shark horrors because i actually appreciate sharks a lot and i think they're just misunderstood creatures that are hunted down for their fins and for just because people hate them because of jaws let's be honest and they're very misunderstood but they make for a hell of a crazy good antagonist in horror movies I just, I really love them both ways. I'm scared of them to death, but I would love to just dive in a cage and see some sharks around me. You know, the, the good old morbid curiosity of will I die if I do this or not, you know? So, death in the deep. I'm very excited to pick this up. Then we have a manga, and this actually my boyfriend got for us both because we just, we got... 
the hype got us and we had to know. Uh, we both like spy stories and you are seeing where this is going. Uh, and we, we both enjoy cool art style and cool characters and stories. So, of course, we got Spy Family Volume 1. And this is by Tatsuya Endo. And first of all, we love this dude. What's his name? Twilight. Okay. <laughs> Why are you called Twilight? <laughs> I, I legit just thought, just look at him all pale. And I was like, okay, are you a fucking spy vampire? But <laughs> my obsession with vampires apart, this has been hitting big in manga format and is now an animation. I am trying to watch it, but first I want to start reading it. So, yeah, I don't know what this is about. I think it's a family. One is a spy, another is an assassin, and the child's a tel telepath, but nobody knows. Uh, and they're like a fake family for a mission, and it's in the Cold War times, I think. I don't know. It's interesting. I want to read it, and it's incredibly famous right now. You probably all have read this, so I will give you my opinions when I do so. Then we have a name that we already heard in this haul, and that is J. Alexander. But this is actually a book by him and not a book edited by him. <laughs> so this is the Lunchling. And first of all, the covers that he does are just gorgeous. Like, look at this. This puts the fear of God in me. Like, look at that. There's a demon in here. Um, and it says, Lynchling, a novella, and in the back it says, Orville and Ailey Taylor would do anything to get their son to eat his dinner. Lennon's a fussy kid, and desperate times call for desperate measures, which is why they started using the puppet. And um, I don't want to read more, because it has puppets, which is, um, I mean, I don't, mm, I don't mind puppets, but one of my uh, Achilles heels in horror is... Um, possessed dolls uh not like annabelle style but like ventriloquist dolls for instance they are they're like i legit don't want to have anything to do with someone or with actual ventriloquist dolls so <laughs> when they're like we used a puppet to make our child eat dinner uh Ah, I am already seeing that this is gonna go so fucking wrong and that's why I wanted this for myself because I was like Jay Alexander is going to bring the fucking horror in this. It's going to be amazing and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I hope that it will prove me right. Then I have a book that I was anxiously awaiting the release and that is Salida by Vivian Rain and I am so happy that I have this on my hands. I want to start reading this as soon as as I possibly can. I follow Vivian on Instagram and we talk sometimes and she is just the loveliest person that you will ever meet in your life. And this, first of all, looks beautiful. I have never seen such a gorgeous, horrific cover. And the back of it, uh, what it says, it looks beautiful as well. And I, I just know, I just know that she is going to write or has written an amazing story and I want to read it so much that I can review it for you guys and it says faith or fear pick your poison passing through the motions of a life soaked through with the stench of death Sadie Starling Passiona has never strayed from the safety of her home her only solace the Ascenda Spinoza but when she inherits a dark secret planted deep beneath the floorboards of her family's century-old estate, she finally sees a means to alleviate the loss and grief that plague her every waking moment. But there's a toll to be paid. Faith is all she's told she needs at the Hacienda's bloody history threatens to pull her into the grave. Yet who does she believe in when faith and fear become one and the same? Ah, my god, I want to read this so fucking much. Next, uh, we have two books that I got in my Abominal uh, Book Club unboxing. I will leave it link up above for you guys to check it out. I've got some goodies as well as books. Uh, I've got actually three books, but one of them was Terror in the Trench, the anthology in which I participated. And I'm going to re-gift that because I already have the book. I'm going to re-gift the book that came to uh, one of my friends that said that she wanted to read it. So 
I'm gonna do that. Um, and I have two more books, which is excited, a box with three horror books. So the first one is a very known one, but I haven't read yet, and it's False Memory by Dean Koontz. It's fucking big. I mean, how many pages does this have? I'm seeing 700. I am seeing 800. I am seeing 818. Okay. Um... Oh, I think this was the the one that I read. I've read already a Dean Kuhn's novel. It was like magical realism, but horrific. Um, but it kind of lost me a little bit in the middle of that. I have a review for that one. I don't remember the name of it. I read in Portuguese, so... But I will leave a link up above for you guys to check out if you want. It's one of my first reviews. It's not that good, but... It's not that bad either. And false memory appears to have a lot to do with phobias. And if you know something about me, if you've been here, I am a psychologist. Uh, I am actually doing my PhD right now. And uh, I think that this one is going to be incredibly exciting for me to read and do a vlog on it because it has a lot to do with psychological horror, it appears. And I don't know, I want to give my opinion. I think that it could be extremely interesting. If you want so, tell me something in the comments down below. I think I'll do it anyways, but it will be nice to know that people would actually like that. So yeah, this this is on second hand, but it's actually pretty pristine. I have um, done something to the pages. They were really yellow and they were blotchy and I have done something and now they're they're not anymore, so excitement we have it and then the other book that came in that box was sundial by katriana ward this beautiful orange bluish purpley cover and this is a fucking hardcover and you know i am obsessed with hardcovers i love them and i won't stop swearing about them <laughs> wow this is terrible this was terrible Okay, so Sundial, I have a book by Catron Award, which is The Last House on Needless Street. I haven't read it, it's in the Portuguese version, um, but I really want to read it. I've heard all of the hype and Sundial is so exciting because I do believe it, it has to do with a relationship between a mother and a daughter and how they are both scared of each other for different reasons and like the, the weight that the family legacy has on you. And I like dysfunctional relationships between mothers and children. Well, I don't like them, of course, and I, I hate them in real life, but in fantasy and in fiction, they are incredible plots of the story. Um, I love how that is kind of a taboo topic to talk about, and so it's, it's really cool to talk about. Um, so I don't know the name of this creature that is on the cover. This is not a coyote, but it's like one of those uh, kind of sort of feline, but also doggish creatures that live in the desert or something. I don't know the name of this. Somebody tell me in the comments down below the name of this creature because I, I knew it but I am blanking out on this. But I am I am very excited to read this. I'm really really excited to. I want to read it as soon as possible as all of these. Now for the comic Bonanza of the month we have we have Demons issue 2 which you cannot fucking see because it's inside of this. Okay, we have Demons, issue 2, and this is by Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, Jonathan Glapian, Dave McCaig, and Tom Napolitano. I love this cover. The first cover of the first issue, I have to admit, I was looking at it and I was like, what is this? Also, do you love my voice? <laughs> but this second issue looks amazing, and in the back, there's going to be backstory, I admit that I'm not ready, but I want to read this. Then we have issue two of Red Room Trigger Warning, or Trigger Warnings, by Ed Pishkor, and look at how it's two Friday the 13th masks, like Jason masks, but with um, green all around in the hairs, and it's just so fucking awesome. I love it. It says, meet the pumpkins. <laughs> Meet the pumpkins. I know, like the puns of this. It has the hoodie horror issue. <laughs> I love it. Then we have a favorite on this channel, and that is The Nice House on the Lake issue 8. And this is by James Tinian, Tinian the fourth, Alvaro Martinez Bueno, and Jordi Belair. 
I have read this already. I love this already. Everything is getting so fucking mindfuck and I want more. I want more. And wow, another issue, please. I love this issue. It was great. It was amazing. Then we have another pretty typical one, which is the Joker. Issue 14. And this is also by James Tanyan IV. And where's the rest of the people that work on this? It's terrible that I have to like go to the end of the Joker to like okay it's James Tynion in the fourth it's Giuseppe Camoncoli, Kem Smith, Arif Prianto and Tom Napolitano and this cover is fucking epic it has the Joker and all of the villains and Gordon and I like it I don't know if issue 14 is the last one but I don't think so I think there's going to be ah yeah it's going to conclude on the next one. Oh my god. Okay, so I have to read this ASAP so that I see the next one and see it concluded. I don't know how they're going to conclude this in only two issues. But my voice is failing me. But yeah, we will we will see. We will check it out. I hope that I don't get disappointed by the ending of this. Then we have a hardcover bonanza. And that is The Crows. And this is by Anders Fager and Peter Bergtying. And wow, I mean, look at this art style. It's called The Crows. It has some vines, some animal skulls, and it has this, like, vibe of emo teenage thing. And it says, what lurks in the corners of the house originates in the corners of the mind, which it's so fucking true. As a psychologist, everything that lurks kind of originates in your mind and it's amazing and it says when Kim inherits an old family house in rural Sweden which awesome I have never read anything in rural Sweden and it says there are notes posted everywhere on the walls the doors even the ceiling reminders and drawings of the monsters that still haunt this house and the land on which it sits but the monsters aren't just outside they're in Kim's head in traumatic memories of an upbringing as different other alone Dive into the stunning graphic novel full of darkness, reconciliation, and exploration of the self. And I am seeing a lot of psychological work in this, and I am loving it. So, I cannot wait to read this. Then we have the first volume of House of Slaughter, and I am so fucking happy about this. So, this is by James Tynion IV, as per usual. <laughs> it's by Tate Bromwell, Weather Deladera, Chris Shan, and Mikel Muerto, which I'm really happy to see some of the names of uh, Something is Killing the Children. So this is kind of a spin-off on Something is Killing the Children. I have heard that this is more of like a um, male-male love interest in the world of Something is Killing the Children, which I love. I want more. And it says, you know Aaron Slaughter as Herricus Andler and Rival, but before he don't, the Black Mask... Aaron was a teenager training at the House of Slaughter. Surviving within the school is tough enough, but it gets even more complicated when Aaron falls for a mysterious boy destined to be his competition. And I mean, I love it. Who doesn't like schools, some sort of magic, in this case, very, very deep, dark magic and deep, dark monsters, and some love? We all like it. I love this cover with all of the bleeding and the eyes and and the person in the cover and I am so excited to get to this I'm really happy that I have it I love the slaughters and I want more I want more then we have a new acquisition and it's called blue in green and this is by Ram V Anand RK John Pearson Aditya Bidikar and Tom Muller and this being by Rem V, I have uh, a review of two of his works, and I've loved both of them, and so I, I, my expectations are fucking high for this one. I think this is a unique volume, yes it is, and I want to know, I want to know. It says in the back, struggling musician Eric Dieter returns home for his mother's funeral, and under strange circumstances finds a photograph of a late 60s jazz musician. The search for the musician's identity will soon become an obsession that will take Eric down the spiraling depths of his ambitions, a journey that will erode his faith in reality, forcing him to confront the horrors of his own great expectations. And I mean, again, amazing thematics. Um, and it says here, Jeff Lemire, actually, which wrote Sweet, Sweet Tooth and Gideon Falls, which I've read and loved, 
says, I've known that Rem V was one of the next great comic writers for a while, and I fucking agree. With blue and green, he proves it, and then some. And Anand RK's artwork is a total revelation. Together they make beautiful music, all wrapped in an amazingly cool Tom Muller package. This is one of the best looking books and most moving comics you'll read all the year, which, yes, we want. And then Kieran Gillen from The Wicked and the Divine and Die says, mixes the numinous and the grounded in every panel, moves like, moves like music. Yes, that's what we want. It's what we want. It's about music. What else could you want? <laughs> And we have some manga, and we have Mars Red Volume 2. I haven't started this series yet, but I'm very hopeful that it will be a good series. It's by Buno Fujizawa and Karakara Kemuri. Uh, and it's about vampires. It's a kind of a dystopian society with vampires. You have vampires fighting vampires. You create vampires to fight vampires, something like that. And everything is red, everything has blood on it. And this one is very, it has a Vitruvian man from the Da Vinci, from Da Vinci. And it has a lot of Tokyo Ghoul vibes on the masks of these people. And the art style of this is pretty cool. So I am excited to get this. Then we have volume five of Asadora. We have volume five of Asadora by Naoki Urasawa. And I haven't read any of this. I'm a terrible person. But this apparently is the story of this girl. She gets orphaned and she starts living with this man and uh, it's her life apparently. Um, I think she's a pilot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of any of this but Urazawa has made some incredible manga works and this is the first work that I have access to that it's by him so I really want to read it. His art style is incredible. It's really old manga art style but really cool. I love the shadings and yeah, I want to read it. I think it will be fun. And then we have a prized possession. Finally, I have this, and that is Witch Hat Atelier Volume 6, which was the only one that I was missing between Volume 1 and Volume 8. And I have all of these. They were all of the ones that came out, I believe, so I can binge read this shit because I read the first one and I loved it, absolutely. So now I want to binge read and I'm gonna do it. And this is by Kamome Shirahama. And it's perfect. Uh, it won uh, an Eisner Award. And it's, it's incredible. If you want to read fantasy, this is your thing. It's, it's just, it's beautiful. But I can't help falling in love with you. Ay, ay, ay. We love beautiful love songs. <laughs> 